Ladies and gentlemen, we're live with uh, Five Times August, and he's also a dude right down there, Brad. He is the solo act, uh, singer-songwriter Brad Skistimus. Now, he's appeared on uh, all kinds of shows all over the planet. He's getting some really good traction, especially with this album, Silent War, because in early 2021, Brad, like many of us, got sick and tired of being sick and tired, and he began releasing a series of protest songs which went against the grain of his, what he was doing at that time. And a lot of people liked it and I loved it. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show, Brad, because like I was telling you uh, when we first met, I helped start the March Against Monsanto uh, when I was organizing these marches with thousands of people. Artists were giving me their CDs, they were protest songs. And I wanted to support those guys because they're all independent. You know, they don't sign any deals because a lot of people want to stay away from them for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can be successful is by word of mouth. So welcome to the show and thank you for what you do. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. Cool. So uh, tell, tell us a little bit about how it, how did it roll out? Mm -hmm. How did I get to be angry protest, dangerous conspiracy theorist, rock and roll? <laughs> right. rock hated and by, hated <laughs> by everyone. <laughs> well, it, it all kind of uh, accumulated towards the end of 2020. In fact, I was looking back through some recent uh, posts that popped up in my memories. And I think it was um, after the 2020 election was was the, the pivotal moment to me because I was looking back at some of those posts. And, um, you know, we had all kind of sat through 2020 being told what to do and where to go and what to think and everything. Um, and then I think after the 2020 election or so, like everybody that was that was shaming and blaming everybody went out and started celebrating and like it was no big deal. And my posts got really, uh, really uh uh, sarcastic and snidey after that, because I was like, Oh, look at all the COVID parties that, that are happening in this uh, COVID is over party parties happening in the streets because no, everybody just threw it out the window that day. Um, but really it came down to, I was thinking about the, my kids wondering what kind of world we were setting up for them. I had a platform to use. I was waiting for my music heroes to speak up and they weren't. And so I, I didn't really feel like I had any other options. So you know, I, I released one song sort of as a way to just vent my frustration. I kind of thought that that would be maybe the end, you know, maybe just say my piece and, and move on from it. Um, but that actually just just so, sort of started a whole a whole uh, new avenue for me, because what happened was I started losing some, a lot of my old fans and they were I was getting the mean emails and everything, getting all the labels and the name calling. But just as as those were trickling away. A, a good new wave of people were coming in saying, thanks for saying that with your music. And so I kept it up because I felt like, you know, people that let me know I wasn't alone. And I felt like people needed to know they weren't alone. And so um, I leaned into it, you know, a, a little more with each song that I would put out. And um, every couple months I'd put out a new song and finally kind of, I had 10 um, this year and realized I might as well just put them into an album. And that's where we're at now as I've released this album. It's got 12 tracks on it and it's, it's top to bottom sort of the story of the last, uh, two years of, of where, where we've been and, uh, where we're going. You're on mute. <laughs> yeah. I love the fact that you, uh, you uh, print, pressed a vinyl here, limited edition, 35 bucks. Totally awesome. Is it, is it actually a white album? It's going to be a white, white record. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah, that's complete. You know, these are really good prices. It's old school. You got a CD. Um, and geez, the more people we can get this information out to, uh, the better. And because, you know, you're not saying anything that is, uh, in my opinion, controversial. So whatever fans you you lost in the initial shift over, uh, good riddance, I think I would say. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because you have a lot of the mainstream uh, music artists right now that are really putting a line in the sand saying, you know, if you don't think this way about, you know, I don't know, uh, Roe v. Wade or something. They don't listen to me. I think Pink said that recently, you know, and then you had Neil Young who drew a line in the sand and was like, you know, it's either me or Spotify. I never said that to my fans. I said, look, I'm, I'm just going to keep saying what I'm saying. Um, you know, 
if if you leave, you leave. I'm not telling you to leave and I'm not asking you to leave, but the door's always open if you want to come back. Because I do think that, you know, I felt like these songs were sort of an investment. And it, I knew a lot of people weren't going to get it early on. And so hopefully at some point people start waking up, you know, that's kind of where the album uh, culminates with the song called lions is that we're all we're right now we're at the crossroads where it's, you either have a choice. There's enough information out there right now. You have a choice to either wake up and move along and realize what's happened, what you maybe have enabled and partaken in. Um, and you can come along with us or you can double down on the evil that's ensued. And uh, that's, that's where you're going to be in history. Yeah. And you don't have to be ashamed to have maybe uh, been thinking incorrectly. I mean, there's no harm. There's no shame in changing your mind at all. I mean, that's the, that's the definition definition of science doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is insanity, but changing your perspective on something based on new information is science and that's growing. It's moving forward. So there is no shame or harm in that yet. There will, there will be people that will bite themselves in their own behind. And we, we know, and we're learning as we've gone through this process for a couple of years, you go woke, you go broke and big corporations are doing the same thing to themselves and losing, losing their shirts. Do you know what I mean? So there is, and I've always said this, don't be scared, be prepared. I'll be always willing to, to stand up for what you believe in. No matter if no one is behind your back or following you, believe in yourself and do what's right. And, and so I respect you for that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean, the album's called Silent War, and uh, there's a song on there called Silent War. And that's kind of what I think that we're in is there's been so many, we're in an information war, right? So there's so many layers of information depending on where you're at um, in, in that journey of things. A lot of people caught on early because they've been aware of misinformation for the last decade and what we've seen, uh, how information gets twisted. And a lot of people are tuned into that. A lot of people are starting to wake up to it right now. Um, so there's different, there's different tiers, you know, but there's a lot of people in the mainstream media who knew what they were doing from the get go. Pierce Morgan is, uh, is, is one of the guys, you know, that he said some pretty horrendous things about people. And, um, and now he's he's all of a sudden he's walking back a little bit. But I called him out on Twitter and I said, when when is your formal apology for all the things that you said? Not just I've changed my mind, but when do you say you're sorry? Right. And and uh, he blocked me. <laughs> so so it's those people, though, that I'm you know, it's like, OK, then you've committed to this this side of things. Now, this is your side of history is like. You have to, you know, and then there's a lot of other people on the uh, on that are just regular people who have been misinformed, who genuine, genuinely made a mistake. Right. A lot of people, unfortunately, made the mistake by getting jabbed and now they have the repercussions of it and they've been, you know, harmed by it. And um, and now they're silenced, you know, and, and their stories aren't being heard. So there's so many different layers to it. But I well, think I don't know uh, if you are aware, Brad, but back in 2012, a law was passed in the United States. It's referred to the bill is referred to as the Smith Modernization Act of 2012. And what it did was it allowed for legal propaganda to be uh, pushed into the mainstream media through intelligence agencies. So mm -hmm. as of 2012, 100% of everything from the top news brackets is being fed a narrative from an intelligence source to create mm -hmm. the fake view of the world that they want. So this process has been ongoing for a decade legally, and the, gen the per person in the general public is completely unaware uh, of this act. But you've seen some of the montages where they – Every single puppet says the same thing. Like mm -hmm. this is dangerous mm -hmm. for our democracy. Right. This is this is coming from that misinformation mm -hmm. campaign being fed mm -hmm. out through the airways and being puppeted by the masses. And everyone just gobbles it up, hook, line, and sinker. I mean, I can't believe how brainwashed people are. It's and now what we're finding out from the election is it's the young generation. Everyone mm -hmm. that's under thirty. Yeah. has been gobbling up the brainwashing the most. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really don't understand what's happened. I mean, I'm I'm still amazed. I sh I'm not really surprised, but it's amazing how protected these people are inside of their e echo chamber. The California and New York are completely different worlds that uh, you have these conversations, these little back and forths online and people, you know, let's say if you mention the Hunter Biden laptop or something like that, um, they're like, that's, uh, there would be proof of that, you know? And it's like, there is proof. It's literally all over the internet. I can it's give you the file. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's just astounding that there are people who haven't even seen that stuff yet. It's just been so, uh, the system is set up in such a way that it keeps them separate from even seeing it through algorithms online and stuff. That That's clear that, you know, what I look at and what I see is designed for what I already know, where uh, and and it's the same thing for them on on their end. And, yeah, it's um, interesting that we have I've experienced where my partner Lee and I we moved out from the East Coast. I'm from Philly. She I met her in Philly. She was there at the UP, but she's from Long Island, and her family is up in New York. Since we left and, and came out here in the middle of nowhere, we're near the Four Corners region. So literally, I'm in the least populated area of the United States, the darkest sky. And we have a ranch we're building here, a permaculture farm, to be completely independent of the system. We, the, What we've been teaching on our channel is you need to tap out and become 100% self-reliant because it's going to get bad. And if you are not self-reliant, you are going to be controlled 100%. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've been teaching. But in the time we've been out here, her, her family has become so isolated and is completely opposite the our thought process that it's almost like they're foreigners. And that's mm -hmm. just from separating uh, ourselves and them being caught in the bubble chamber that's New York, right? And all the blah, blah, blah. And us being out here where it's about Second Amendment and growing food and stuff. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think we all have family members that, you know, I've got a, I've got family that members that live in California, you know, that work in, in the big tech industry. So they're in, inundated with that whole culture of thinking and that, that line of thinking and the idea that they're not, uh, you know, that censorship isn't really censorship. It's just protecting people from the bad information. And, um, you know, I don't know how you don't see it yet. I don't know how you can't break out of that bubble yet. We're almost three years into this chapter of American insanity. And I don't know how uh, anybody hasn't at least cracked open the egg a little bit yet, you know. Um, but uh, it, it's it's so well insulated in some areas of the country that that's just the way it, it seems to be. Yeah, that's an important, unfortunate uh, thing about the world is that you can't change people's minds. It has to happen on their own. You know what I mean? It's a, it's mm -hmm. a weird phenomenon. All the people that are like I, because being an activist, you really give up at some point. You say, you know what? I did my part. It's hard to get people that don't want to listen to listen. And then that's why you make a protest song because it's easy right. to listen to music. And a lot of people don't even know the lyrics to songs that they like. Mm -hmm. But in this case, if you start to hear the lyrics, it can change the way you're thinking. And you do that through music. And I appreciate that. Right. So right. how long has Silent War been out? How are the sales? Where can we get it? Can we get it on like Amazon and Spotify? Yeah, you can. So um, the best way that you make the most money is to come right here. You check out the website and I've got links on there uh, for the vinyl, for the CD, the physical copies I think are important. I think that we need to get back to buying physical things um, because in the digital realm of things, things can be taken away, things can be edited, things can be destroyed and we don't ever get it again. So this is, you know, to me- One this solar is flare away from no music on Spotify. <laughs> right. But it, it is on Spotify. It is on Amazon and Apple. And, and I like it being there because- when it came out last this whole last week, it's been charting on on those charts. And th oh, those they are actually mainstream. will chart you. That's amazing. Yeah, they haven't taken it away yet. So, um, and, and that says a lot about the movement. It says a lot about what people want in in their entertainment and what they're looking for. 
Um, and it, and it makes a statement, you know, we were only, the album was only 20 spots away from Taylor Swift the other day on Amazon wow, awesome. and that's on, on Amazon, you know, the most mainstream sh shopping portal online with the, with the biggest artists that's out there right now. So it says a lot about the movement and I, you know, I don't have a machine behind me. I don't have a promotions team or anything like that. That's just from people sharing this stuff word of mouth and uh, it's completely independent and grassroots and and that says an enormous amount about the people's power is that if we want this stuff to be at the forefront of culture and the conversation we can do it it's voting with our dollars beautiful beautifully put i was saying that 10 years ago to everyone that if you want the best food in the supermarket stop buying the poisonous food and by voting with your dollar, the industry has to shift. So this, as far as Tom McDonald inf infiltrating, you know, the top slots, he's mm -hmm. independent. You're trending on the charts. We can send a message to the establishment with our own money, making our own choices in what, what we want to purchase. And what that does is when it sends that message to industry is they have to change to meet the new paradigm. It's, and that mm -hmm. is how we can change the narrative with just a yeah. couple bucks. Right. Yeah. And a lot of those people on the other side, I mean, they're empty souls. They go where the money is anyway, whether it's what they agree with. You know, they don't have that um, that that morality, you know, eating away at them. They're just after a dollar. So if Amazon does see that, you know, if uh, if sales pick up and, uh, you know, it ends up in Walmart stores or something, n none of them care. They just want to collect their check. And so. Um, so it's an incredible thing to see, though. You know, I don't I think that this this to me, it's it's an album for the people. It's a tool to use, like you said, um, uh, with music. It, it can change the conversation. It can introduce ideas to people. And it's not just me. It's it's the other artists doing it, too. It's in all of entertainment. I think there's a lot of power there. There's uh, guys making movies, making content online, comedians. There's uh, books being written and all that stuff can go a long way if you're, you know, trying to introduce ideas to people um, that might not might not agree with you or they're on the verge or they're asking questions or something. Um, so it, it's it's definitely uh, it's it's been incredible to see not not just here in America, but all around the world, how these songs have reached people, because everybody in the world is going through this right now. It's not just America. It's all around the world. And um you know, there's there's a shift happening and I, I can feel it and uh, it keeps me optimistic. You said you had family in California. Where are you from? I'm uh, in Dallas, Texas area. So I'm Is that where I'm you right... were raised or that's yes. where you are now. Yeah, that's where I was raised. And uh, I used to think that I wanted to move to California or New York <laughs> or something. And <laughs> I'm glad I never moved. But uh, I toured I the country there. Yeah, I toured the country many, many times throughout my twenties, and and I I just knew Texas is is the right spot for me. It's it's a great place to raise a family, and I, and especially over the last two years, um, compared to the rest of the world, um, it's felt relatively sane for as insane as the times have been. Yeah, my friend has a, uh, a his own city in Texas, Texas Tiny Houses. I forget what he named the city. Um, but he's a, just a badass dude. And That's so a cool. lot of cool stuff going on in Texas. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to check out some of Brad's music, you uh, peruse it. We, you can go check him out uh, on YouTube. Uh, did your, as your YouTube channel always had this many subs or have you blown up recently? Well, no, you know, what's funny is uh, the, the channel's grown quite a bit over the last two years. And as it's grown, of course, YouTube has sort of eked its <laughs> way into suppressing and censoring some of the videos. There is a video I released um, a year ago called Sad Little Man, which called out uh, Fauci. And that one sort of went viral. And the moment that happened uh, and the views started spiking up, they removed it from search results. And then not long after that, Wikipedia deleted the five times August page. And, you know, it's, it's silly little things like that, that you're just like, you know, what, what's going on? I can't but, believe that you live in that world. You can't believe right. it. You're like, is this really happening? Yeah, because what I'm so doing. So did they is, remove the video completely? I haven't had any videos removed yet. I've had videos get age restricted and demonetized and hidden from search results, but I really try to go about it in a 
artistic way that uh, isn't as direct or straightforward. Um, and even like if you listen to Sad Little Man, the song on its own, and I don't say Fauci, I don't say vaccines. If you listen to it, you know, you would think it's just about any old creep, corrupt creep. But um, yeah, but even still, they still mark the video for medical misinformation, silly things like that, where you're like, there's nothing in here that you can go after. But it really says a lot about the, the state of censorship, because what I'm doing is art. And so now what they're doing is telling you what kind of art you can uh, you can watch and absorb and, and and they're interpreting it for you. You know, when you put out an, a song or, or a book or a painting or make a joke, you interpret that stuff. And what the big tech oligarchs are doing now are interpreting it for you before it even reaches you. Yeah, but and think that's about a, that's a all the thing. think about all the rap lyrics that are right. that should be censored. And, right. that, and that you're you're writing wholesome lyrics with full sentences, um, mm -hmm. and they're censoring you based on ideology. It's it's right. literally Orwellian. Yeah, and that was part of my uh, my conversation with YouTube because I, I publicly post this stuff on my Twitter and everything every time it happens because I want people to see, you know, it does happen and and it is existing out there. But uh, my video for Jesus, what happened to us? The first time I uploaded that, um, it got flagged uh, with an age restriction, so you have to be eighteen years or older to watch it. And I'm sitting there going, so you will flag this video, which the entire video is just news clips and viral phone clips strung together. Um, so they'll flag that as age inappropriate, but they'll let, uh, you know, a video like Childish Gambino, which has like 800 million views, uh, <laughs> which starts out with him shooting a guy in the head and blood coming out of it. Um, you know, they'll let that stay up uh, completely, you know, ad friendly and not age restricted. And there's all sorts of music videos out there that are just terrible. Um, and you can, you can make those compare, you know, you can compare and contrast those videos, but they don't care. You know, I can say, Hey, um, you know, you guys won't flag this video, but you flag mine. What's up with that? And they just give you the runaround. It feels like you're sort of talking to a bot on the other side, which you probably are, but, uh, yeah, no, yeah there are no people there. Yeah, you can't reach those people. No. No, we've been censored, demonetized, shadow banned for years and years. And I've started other channels that are a little bit have have little less uh shadow banning on them because I don't say things as controversial as I used to say on this channel. Mm. Um, but it's just it's crazy, which is why I started a rumble channel so I could say anything I want. Uh mm -hmm. I think I have six thousand or more subs over there, it's been growing. But mm -hmm. that's a place where you could throw up all your music and all sure. your thoughts, and there mm -hmm. will they will never censor you over there. Yeah. And it's good to diversify. Do you are you over on Rumble? Yep, I'm on Rumble and BitChute and Gab okay. and Truth Social and uh, Getter. I'm on I'm on all of them. The, right, the, cool. it, it, so it it's just I like to stay on Twitter because I like causing trouble on Twitter. I think there's still a conversation to be had there. You know where you can. You can eek people a little bit that disagree with you. Um, and, and you got and a check that, mark. Is that eight bucks? No, that I've had that for, you know, I'm surprised I didn't get it taken away or something, but I've had that for, I don't know, probably 10 years or so. But it's, it's funny because. Oh, uh, it's because it was before your protest music. Yeah, I got it before yeah. my, before the, pro I don't think you I would have gotten never it. given you that. No, no, they wouldn't have given me that. Um, yeah, so I think that that's one reason why I haven't been removed yet. Although, you know, I try to be, I've gotten a little more uh, straightforward with the things I've been posting on on Twitter lately since the Musk takeover, just testing the waters on his on his claim of free speech. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm surprised I haven't, I, I have been, uh, I have had uh, posts get flagged. I've been suspended from Facebook too and stuff. But um I still have people that follow me from the old days who disagree and I want them to see what's happening. You know, I want them, I still want to show up in their feeds. So as great as the other platforms are, um, you know, they, they are, you know, you do find yourself in, in echo chambers still a little bit, which is great. It's still kind of silly though, that we even had to, do that you know that's another thing that says a lot about the state of censorship and freedom of speech in this country that we have to go other places to say the same thing right 
I'm I'm grateful they're there. But uh, the fact that we have to misspell words on accident, right? Like the word vaccine, when we post it, you have to misspell it or use the emoji or cross it out if you have a meme that says the word in it. That should speak volumes to people who are arguing that free speech is an under attack because it clearly is that you have to reword yourself and dumb it down and disguise these things in order to meet the algorithm, right? To beat the algorithm, actually, right? Exactly. Yeah. There's a game going on, and that's that's part of the war. Well, I always said that you fight the system through the system. So, and the mm -hmm. way we do this is the way you're doing it. You get up on those charts. You get people looking at what you're doing and, and we can switch the narrative by affecting what we're doing. And the only way you can do that is by doing something. So you can help out Brad by checking him out on Twitter and Truth Social and Gavin every single place he is and give him support there. Pick up this Silent War album and then post it on your social media. Go look at the playlist in at YouTube and share your favorite song. And that's how people get to see him. So it's through self-promotion that all of us become more successful in getting our message out to more people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the better that this album does on charts, like I love the idea of the album climbing and climbing and people, you know, people on the outside going, what's this album that came out of nowhere and going, you know, oh, they're it's all songs about the last couple of years because then all of a sudden it's now in their brain they're going to check it out they're going to go what is this and that's the power that we have so um yeah that's that's what it is these songs are tools these the videos are tools you know if, if you can't think of you know that's one of the things is a lot of a lot of the feedback that i get is like i people saying i didn't really know how to say what i wanted to say but posting your music video of this song, you know, whatever it is, um, help me say it in a way that um, I couldn't say it. And so these songs to me, um, you know, they're they're kind of like little weapons to use during the during the times. You're muted. Yeah, if more importantly, if you can share a video that expresses what you want to say but are scared to say it and be like, no, Brad said Brad said it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You put the blame on me. I've right. got a, I've got a song called Joe that's about Biden. And um, I drop a big mean F bomb in that song. And so that Ooh. turns some people off. But I'm like, look, I say it so you don't have to say it. Okay. If you don't want to say it, don't. But that word and you know, captures the frustration of the times we're in. And I know you feel that same way. So let me say it. You could put the blame on me. That's fine. <laughs> but it's still a tool for you to use and express yourself. Excellent. Uh, you've been an awesome guest. Keep up the good work. Uh, I'd love to have you on again after you become super famous. So don't forget me. Absolutely. And, yeah. And guys out there, get the album. All the links are going to be below. We'll have it in the description. I'm going to put it up in the, uh, live chat when I premiere this. I think I'm going to wait to premiere this, uh, this Friday or Saturday. So the most people watch it. Um, and then go buy the single tracks on Spotify or Amazon. Come here and give him some views and subscribe at his YouTube and share the, the videos of your favorite songs in your social media to stick your foot up the asses of the masses. <laughs> and that's basically what we're here to do. Is it not? Yeah. yeah. Give me some final uh, words. Uh, you're just an awesome dude. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, just, you know, check out five times august.com. Make sure you sign up on the mailing list there. I I'm going to have to plug that because at some point I'm anticipating getting the boot from some of these social media platforms. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, there's a, there's a little sign up form, um, at the very bottom there and you can join the mailing list and that way you can stay connected on, on new videos and stuff like that. But no, I appreciate you having me on today and, and I appreciate you, uh, introducing the music to, to some new people, hopefully. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Brad. And I wish you nothing but the greatest success. Thank you.